Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix, and welcome to Plotting and Scheming, covering Season 52, 3 vs. 3 Grand Arena Championship Week 3. So it's the wrap-up, we survived, I'm here with my co-hosts uh, TJ and Sasha Isha, Dagger is absent, so he might jump in later, not 100% on it, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. How are you guys doing though? Doing well, doing well. How are you doing, Tess? Mm, doing okay. Uh, um, I'll be okay. I I'm at a two and one, and I'm not sad about it. But it, it was definitely a self-inflicted two and one. So hmm? it would end it. I, I had a I had a two and one week, and it was a Tass inflicted two and one. Yes. It was fully uh, Tass, man. It was. It was. <laughs> it was <laughs> I think it was learning. Don't get. Don't take away that you didn't learn some good stuff, Sasha. I know you had a growth, good growth mindset for sure, man. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It must be. It must be that way. <laughs> How else can you ensure victory reliably? But yes, I did have the uh, the vaunted 3-0. Um, so fantastic. It was an 8-1 season. It's been a while. I, I think that's pretty rare for me. I'm usually good for a 7-2. and two. Um, But yeah, it was it was a good start. You know, it's going to be a wild start, rather, for this next five season. Ha ha, ha ha, yeah. not it. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. There, there, you know, no, no regrets, right? That's uh, right. No regrets. <laughs> Write that on your chest, sir. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, let's go right into it, guys. Um, what worked here for week three? TJ. Start us off. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking. I was trying to go through it. Uh, I was hoping the data would be up. Um, nothing was surprising. Mm -hmm. It was all the same go-tos on what we were doing. Uh, GG Stap, still the monster that it was. Getting me my six, my 56s on Saw was uh, just love it. Just mm -hmm. num, 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 num. So glad we found that counter. Um, other things, uh, uh, nothing else. He didn't really. Okay, so for my opponent, he did a strategic choice. Obviously, it's efficiency, but he cheesed the hell out of me. Like, mm -hmm. no GLs okay. on defense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and which was a, a choice, because when we go to the what doesn't work, it'll piss me off again. But that was, uh, one was bad, one was the other. So, what worked was a lot of 58s. A lot of solo GLs. Uh, obviously, Bane is, everybody loves Bane, and Bane is the monster that he is. That was working just fine. But nothing uh, had to come through in the clutch for you this week, then? No, no, just solo GLs. Uh, I guess the one that clutch will be what didn't work. So we'll talk about that. And I, what I told you guys, it would be nice, and it was the curiosity that they killed the TJ that that got me. But everything else was as you would expect. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, Sasha, how about you? What worked? Uh, so similar in one of the, in one of the battles, I think it was uh, it was against Darth Merrick. Not not my match with you, Tess, but uh, GG Stapp uh, taking on Saw. Because uh, you know, saw with that turret DC can be such a menace, and that was really comfortable. Mm -hmm. I had a little more banner bleed uh, than like you did against me, or than uh, TJ did. But um, the other thing that was worth mentioning, because I I like GG staff with that data cron on defense as well. Uh, you know, I, I said it against Utah, so I, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just you can't mess around with it either. And so I wanted to find an alternative against Saw that wasn't uh, a GL. And I used Maul ISC Gar. And um, I liked it. I think it bled three or four banners. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it, it worked pretty well. In that one, I was using a Doubt Datacron. And that, that helped uh, sort of ensure that there wasn't sort of a massive stack of heal over time on, on Truett. So he hadn't ramped uh, in the way he otherwise might have. But um, so that was a nice one. A couple other things quickly, like uh, Rex Crex Fives, I, I saw you know pretty consistently this season, and Tuscans were just a really reliable counter against them. Um, it takes a little yeah. bit of time, but this is against like um, you know R nine fives, uh, high protection, um, Ami on Crex, sort of like as, as strong a team as that Rex Crex Fives can be, and Tuscans even not having their data cron, but having the Raider Ami. Uh, it just, you really, at least my experience is, you, you can't die. You just sort of go quickly enough and you mow down that mm -hmm. team. And it's a nice use of Tuskets. The yeah. last thing I'll call out was against uh, Qui-Gon Jinn teams. And Qui-Gon Jinn teams with the current Jedi Deacron are just so juiced, right? Like, Very I mean, they serious They are hitting affair. incredibly hard. Exactly. And um, 
I found that my old go-to, it's a little gimmicky, but works great, is Dash, Vandor, Young Lando. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter who I go against. Um, my recommendation would be put some, you know, find a Datacron that has some health. It doesn't even matter if it's a light side or a dark side Datacron. Just have some health to make your Vandor a little thicker. Um, it's nice if that Vandor is at R9. Um, and then at least at the beginning, just, in, you know, it, you, you do want to be a little mindful of trying not to have uh, Anakin do his uh, his AOE if Vandor has already taken any damage. And whenever you have a chance, have young Lando hide Vandor so that there's no direct damage that he takes. It's only AOEs. Mm -hmm. And I, I took out really juiced up uh, Qui-Gon Jinn squad. So still a big fan of that, that counter. It feels gimmicky. Your dash and your young Lando die 50 times, but at the end, it's somewhere between 54 to even 57 because there is some nice protection regen. So those are my uh, those are my ones. How about you, Tess? Yeah. So for my part, I had uh, ooh, we got the um, the relic packs in the shop again. Um. All right. Well, anyway, my first round was against an Erodium opponent, so eh. Let me, let me take a look here. Now, round two was against Sasha Isha. And y'all know, if you've been watching the stream here, especially the last couple of years, I've been chasing that uh, that dragon now, trying to, to beat Sasha for literal years. And uh, if finally, finally, we broke through. Finally, uh, the odds broke my way. And let, let that be a lesson to all of you out there, all future opponents. Uh, no one can defeat Tassinix seven times in a row. So hi. <laughs> All right. I don't know I how many sure. matches we actually had here, but it feels like something like that was like our sixth or seventh. So it's it's good to get one. But uh, all right, let's talk about what actually worked here. So GG stat B one, you guys already both hit on it, but yes, that was just not only was it just a reliable fifty six, but the thing that makes it so cool is it's not a 56 where you're restoring somebody up to 56. It's that somebody's just lost a protection banner from GG taking a nibble, and they mm -hmm. don't get to take a turn. There, I cannot think of another team and Datacron combination right now that just absolutely forbids that Saw team from taking a turn. Not even JMK can do that. So, And, and JMK is actually fairly rough against that team. So it's like I just overwhelmingly impressed with that. Fought a trail. You're welcome. Uh, sorry, what? Hmm? You're welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. No, yeah, that was that was just gold. <laughs> it was gold. Um, now Sasha set a tray and Nihila Savage, and you know JKR has kind of been sitting on on the back bench for most of the team, uh, most of the season. I hadn't really used him a ton, and if I did, it was just you know overkilling some B team, something like that. But J uh, JKR, Jedi Cal, and Hoda showed some um, win history on that team. And I had to stop and think about, you know, how I wanted to manage the fight. But after that, pretty smooth sailing for a 56. Um, let's see. Malgus Malik DR did work against a GG stat B1. But I really think I have to question the wisdom of DR in there. I wonder if it shouldn't be Sith Marauder instead. Like, just uh, a hardier Sith. Um, you won't, you won't get full protection banners with him, but, like, between Malgus and Malik, you'll be okay. But, like, DR actually has some risk to get exploded and exited from the fight. So, yeah. Um, what's next? Trench Dooku Watt. Guys, Sidious has been disappointing me a lot this season, and this was a near disaster. I was sunk against Sasha if this didn't work. So we again, you know, the odds broke in my favor. I'm not, I'm not pulling anybody's leg. I, I, I would just like to comment. I was there and had to put the comment in of never do that again. It, it was, it was. I, I seen it. It I was seen it. Literally three or two seconds on the clock. Yeah, yeah. Horrible. Um, Most horrible experience I've watched. It was, and, it was horrific oof. because he had enough tenacity baked into them. Where even though I had something like a uh, hundred and forty-one percent potency. Um, on Sidious before the Datacrons, bonuses and everything. I mean, the, the guy was was kitted to kill. 
and they're just an, uh, an enormous number of resists. Very fast Watt, who is taking enough turns to be using his basic frequently and cleansing the dots. So it's just very, very difficult um, to be able to actually build up to five stacks. And then when it was, it was like, it was Dooku. And then Watt's like, oh, you know, you can just come back now. So it's like, we obviously had to get Watt, but Watt was like, nah, I'm just going to be huge, and I'm also just going to dispel myself for like four minutes. Like, yeah, something like four minutes and 20 seconds. It was like, it felt like just over 30 seconds left on the clock, and then Watt died. And then, you know, I was preparing to time out on the lone trench, but it somehow all came together. Uh, RJT, Resistance Hero, Finn, and Holdo, with the Holdo Cron. Ma uh, Mother Talzin, Marin, and Asajj. It was, it was challenging to manage, um, but it was a fifty-three in the end, and I think with a little more practice, I probably could have had a fifty-four. Um, but yeah, that you know, with the Holdo Crown and everything, and and you know, Sasha keeps his Resistance Hero Finn very fast, very dangerous, so. It, it, it's a B team that you could have really gotten jammed up on with that Holdo level 9. Um, my backup plan to that was like a Lord Vader solo. So that's pretty much what that bought me. And that was great. Um, Finzori Rose. No, there's nothing exceptional there. I was... Just, nope, nope, nope. Ba, 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 ba. DTMG, Gideon, and Scout. Lord Vader, Royal, and Shore. Um... For most most of the time, I like Lord Vader on defense, but this worked for a 54. I would gladly pay three banners to do this consistently, and um, excuse me, save Malgar ISC for literally anything. Um, okay, so that was that on Sasha. Last round was against um, the Partic uh, F2P F2 Partic account. Um, I know that Bebe Patron plays the GACs on that account, so it was a fun match. Uh, I don't usually use DTMG on offense, but there I was, using it against Java Kersant and Bausch, possibly for the first time, I think. Uh, 57, so I know I'm not pioneering anything there, but yes, really very, very smooth. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. That's nothing revolutionary. Yes, the Tuscan Chieftains against Rex uh, Rex Fives, just as Sasha said. Uh, had to be patient with it, but 56. Um, let's see. Banquil, yeah, Banquil IG-11. It doesn't matter. Big or small Tuscans. doesn't matter how big they come. That's like a 55-56, and yesterday it was a 55. Um, Re uh, RJT, Resistance Hero Finn, and Swallow. Another team that needed to work here so i didn't have night sisters for this this time because i i used them on my only drop that round um and we'll cover that but jkr jedi cal and jkl pretty much handled it uh it helps that my jkr is like relic nine lots of health on him so it took longer into the fight for his savior to get triggered i wonder how that might have gone if it got you know triggered off rip something like that um but 55 it was. Let's see. Anything else interesting? Fight-wise. Afro BT1 triple zero. Um, very rare to see it on defense. So I had to stop and think what I wanted to do against it. Dash Han Chewy with like a 93% crit damage cron from set 13. Made very short work of that for 56. Uh, Alright. I'd say that's about it. Okay. Segment two, gentlemen. What didn't work, TJ? Oh, so we're just gonna pretend. We're just gonna pretend like I didn't show up. Oh, I didn't hear you. Uh, I didn't hear a join because because the uh, Discord pings are muted when OBS is on. But yeah, I figured you might dive in at some point. How you doing? Oh, it's Dagger, everyone. By the way. Yes. No, just uh, had had some. Uh, well, we can talk after this. But yeah, had had some stuff come up. Sorry, got waylaid. Uh, yeah, only really two oh. things to kind of mention. I got to use Afro versus Jabba because they put a prod up cron on it instead of a doubt cron, and then I got to Wampa another gas. Uh, gas arc echo, I assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair enough. 
All right, well, all right, well, we'll we'll actually just pong right back off of you and resume the normal turn order, I guess. So, yeah, for what didn't work, what what let you down, Dagger? Uh, man, let's see. I tried DTMG versus Leia. That didn't work. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm at the point where where this last week I was just like, I need to try and make this interesting for me. Um, <laughs> so I did one, one and two. I don't know if I said. I don't know if you asked that of them at the beginning. But I went one. Uh, and two we did. We did I at just, the beginning. Yeah. I just I just did stuff. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, of of note, things that didn't work. Uh, like I said, DTMG versus Leia, Bane versus C. Um. Let's see. Uh oh, C Stidious versus uh. Kara, uh, not Kara, uh, uh, Seer. Malico's being there is really rough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He throws rocks the second time, and you're just like, wait, I wasn't full health and protection. And so then I think suddenly it's that third homie that probably locks that out. I looked on, I looked on uh, Insight, and it looked pretty consistent. I think it's that third Omicron. I didn't check the stats on that, but I think it's the third Omi that makes that like not work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can tell you that. I, I'm not going to give you a list of teams that didn't work, but you can use your imagination. Uh, there was a bow in the pack, and I didn't have a GL. So Ooh. to answer your question, nothing worked. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, wait, she, I she forgot. to target my list against Treya, and that was lights out. That, well, yeah, that's disastrous. Um, but I forgot Michael to Ross mention. Lights out. I, I forgot to mention one thing that worked uh, that was really important. Um, I can't believe I forgot it. Against uh, against that last round, against uh, Bebe. So he had BK and Paz Grogu in the back, and I set uh, C... Or, sorry, I set uh, Trench Watt Dooku, and I'd already used Slacker Arm GBA to fight Leia. So we had to do C. I, I shifted set away from Bane, so I had to do Bane Sass versus his Ray, and it was scarier than I would have liked, but we, we did just fine in the end. Um, but it was C, Set, and Scion. And we went in with a Set 14 Prot Upcron, which made everybody live from the opener. You know? So they ended up, you know, um, both sides eventually ended up getting, you know, smited down over the course of the fight, but not before it was too late. We transformed and zapped them out, and that was it. So, uh,. I'm usually using armor there, and sometimes I've used Watt. Uh, just running up in there with two Sith, just having that reset for the health and protection and relying on that instead of a cleanse from tank tech or something like that. Um, I liked it. I liked it. It was still like 49 or 50, which is what it was going to be anyway. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, oh, and, um, back to you, Dave. Oh, and And... and, and a lot of I had a handful of drops that were just me being a complete uh, idiot. Uh, so if you're gonna take Bane in against Treya, take a tank that taunts. Because mm. I did his middle against Treya, and Nihilus was like, "Bane, bye bye." Ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Make sure you man. take. Or There's like moments you, re you realize that Bane's not technically a GL. It's just, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did something bad happen, Dagger? Was something bad happening from that Nihilus one hit knockout that does, in fact, do the one hit knockout? I don't understand. What took place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is, a, that is, yeah. <laughs> that would that would that would be humbling. That would be humbling. I would sit there and I would yeah, actually be like aghast with myself for a moment. But Bane kills yeah, everybody. No, I, sat there, I, I, I sat there and I said some not very nice things to myself. Yeah. But Bane <laughs> kills everybody. What do you mean? Looking at it. I, I believe I believe Nihilus doesn't doesn't take kindly to being called that the weaker Sith. So he, he'll let you know real quick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then uh, also also just uh, I got caught out a couple of times for not reading Datacrons. Uh, so the Ray uh, damage level six. Can beat Bane. Mm, the, stacking the, the offense. offense level six. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that she she caught Bane in a moment of weakness, and uh, 
he was no more. So what was so, the what was the team composition with Ray? It was Ray, Ben, and Holdo. Okay, with the and offense. I've seen okay. some fails on that. I've seen some fails on that one. Yeah, and, and I thought, and because it was the Raycron, I thought it would be doable because there wasn't a third damage dealer on the team. Mm -hmm. There wasn't like a JTR or something. I even took in Talon just as a little bit of safety. Did you not know that Ray counts as one and two? She's both damage dealers. She's number one and number yeah. two, and, and somewhere right. is Ben. That's right. One might even say she's all of the Jedi. I, I heard uh. that somewhere. That's reliable sources. That's reliable sources. <laughs> but now, what I need you to do, Dagger, is go sit in the corner and be sad. You you put your head, you raise your head to shame. You're not allowed Somehow, to do that here. that reference yeah. returned. Yeah. Oh, and you then, uh, again, I didn't, check the, I didn't check the level three on Finn, Finn, Zori, and, uh, yeah, it was, the, it was the Tenacity the up one, and I took in Night Sisters, and Finn threw his, and then Finn threw his little grenade, and then I never inflicted plague ever again and died. Yep. Meets expectations. Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a lot of this was just, like, me just, like, I'm not checking anything. I just wanted to, like, have some fun and do some stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that's what didn't work for me. Uh, on to you guys. Okay, yeah, TJ, step on up. Expose yeah, your shame. Nah, I really don't have a lot this week. Uh, and we talked about it, and, and I'm going to call it where it is the truth. Uh, I went two and one because of a self-infliction. Um, and then I think to what Dagger said, um, what ultimately got me my loss was two things that got me one was the damn sit on the DTMG. Um, everything has gone fine this week doing that two out of three, this, this third round, I'll call it the 15% of BS that's going to come with it. So that one didn't work on DTMG, but there was nothing behind like no cron details, nothing that would have shown why I lost. Mm. Hey, just for some reason, couldn't keep up. Um, and I couldn't do what I needed to do. So that we'll just call it a freak thing that, you know, Sid was not okay that round. No, it's not been, look, it, it, it's not been all roses and sunshine. Okay. No. Like there's, there's no, no shortage no. of content creators, I, not I, content I, creators, whatever that have said that this is, I, yeah, I am, I'm like, yeah, I'm straight up like 50% using sit on offense, period. I, dude, I was two thirds this week. Everything was going fine, as you would expect. It was yeah. going great. And then it just happened to be this one where it was like, nope, you're not getting it today. And I was like, well, damn. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was five for nine this month using okay. Sidious. Well, that, and that tracks. And that's yeah. where I think, I think yeah. I'm about the same on what I was going to do. Three for uh, five, three for five versus. You get first well, and we'll be able to see what the actual numbers for the whole season is, but I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if it's a little better than half, something like I, that. It's 66, I think, is what we saw on, on Swiggo, and I, I really believe that's probably where it's at. I, I think a good two-thirds or something like that is really what this is going to be, where mm. it can work. But, but, but man, now, is that with all the filters oh, and, and, and on, though? Oh, is that like Kyber right. One, all that? Yeah, it, it, when I went and looked at it, it was like sixty percent or sixty-six percent win mm -hmm. rate against mm -hmm. um, the DTMG setup. And we're talking the full money. Okay, um, it's mm -hmm. higher when it's a bad comp. So if you try to put death in there, I think and and uh, storm or death and scout or stuff like that, it goes significantly up. But the standard sure, comp yeah. about sixty percent or something like. So it's like it tracks because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there's no rhyme or reason. I played it correctly. I watched the fight. It just was not my day, well, and I'm okay with that being the answer. I, I can I can tell you from my experience using it, and I went out of my way to use it every round. Um, I, Sasha mentioned this in the in between video, I want to say, but on the Sidious Crown, I have like eighty percent health steal, and that is like half as much as you want. Oh like, no, I, yeah, I, well, that's exactly yeah, what I'm yeah, at. So, so, I'm at forty five. I'm at forty five. See, so, yeah, I'm, I'm okay trying. with yeah, the health I, steal. I, it's the big like fifty plus percent health that's made it yeah. pretty breezy for me to get by in like well, any no, of those things. I, I have. I have 40 plus percent health and I can tell you that the health doesn't matter when you don't gain it back. Yeah. But, but either way, I just want to call it out. It, he did it. He yeah. did it two out of threes for me this week. So I'll take what he did. It tracks with the numbers that the third one was like, we're just not going to have it today. And yeah. that was fine. The other one was the one I yeah. wanted to try and it, it was the cat. And I called it the curiosity that killed the TJ. And this is what got me my loss, which I'll explain as I'm not overly bad. Cause I'll be like top 100 or right outside. So it's like, yeah, it's a good start for fives. So, so um, still like top 15. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the spirit. I'm top 15. Yeah, that's so the that's, spirit. <laughs> yeah, because I was 66, and so I'll end up somewhere good. Um, so what I wanted to try was the dude cheese me, is what I said, and then Dagger, now you didn't catch it. Um, he did a full cheese. No GLs on defense. Mm -hmm. So I knew I could have probably won because I was 58 and all of a sudden. something? 
No, a Trulon from a uh, Husky Patrol. He normally Sorry, sets I was light, but out of a friend. Oh, you're good, dude. But <laughs> so what we faced, what we faced though, was he put fifth brother with uh, eighth and ninth with a Doubtcron, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I bet you Malikos can take it. And I tried, and I damn near had it, and then it, and then it came back. I damn near had fifth killed. Uh, was throwing the rocks, everything's going fine, and then this, the doubt just got the better of me, and it didn't hold. So I was mm -hmm. like. Oh, self inflicted, but I wanted to try. Solo? Wait, wait, wait. I wanted to try. Yeah, I wanted to try. Okay, okay. Did you? Yeah, because you know, if I take anybody, they're dead, right? If I took anybody with Malikos, like, I bet you Malikos can take this by himself. There's mm -hmm. just nothing here. There's no seventh. There's nobody stopping me. There's nothing to. So, like, let's try. Because, worst case, you know what? I have fun trying it. It, it got, I think, uh, fifth was down to the red. Um,. But after that third hit, I couldn't hold anymore, and Malikos just dropped. And if I, if I was probably a little faster, or you know, if I had the second character, they were all dead. But yeah, I had to try. Him. So that was my other one that didn't hold, and that was like I said, my error. But I, I had to know: can he do it by himself? Mm. Ah. Yeah, was that fun. was. Dude, I had a blast. I had a blast. I, I bet you Malikos did. Was, dude, Malikos was fucking them up. <laughs> I bet you. He's, I bet you were having a good old dude. time. Yeah, dude, Malikos was popping cherries, and he was so. Making them look so bad. wait, you you must have run that with a doubt. Then what'd you do? Doubt I, I did. I I think I took the doubt, or I took high offense. I don't remember. Dude, yeah. But it if was, it was a set fourteen with health on it and health steal, pff, sold. You were probably fine. Yeah, and that's probably what it would have been. But it's like I was close, man. The the amount of damage damage going to those guys. But you know what the comes from that? The doubt. And the mm -hmm. doubt was what was catching me uh, for trying it with the solo. Mm -hmm. That's yep, that I ultimately is what. But yeah, that was it. But Malikos was doing amazing things. That was a lot of fun, man. Fair that enough. Was it. Those are the fails. Okay. All right, Sasha Isha. How about you? Step on up. Yeah, I had uh, I had three uh, three that are worth noting, or three. Yeah, I think three fails on ground uh, over the week. Um, all against Utah. So yes, <laughs> one was definitely uh, sort of along the lines of TJ. Like I'm just going to lean in. and I'm going to try something fun and be really cool if this worked here. And that was against your trench Dooku Django, um, which is you know it, it had a trench cron, really like well set trench cron. You've also got a nice relic investment, presumably for TW. You've got like the R9 trench. Uh, so yeah, yeah, for, for T, yeah, yeah, for T, yeah. yeah, that's why I did it. Yep. Yeah. 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 He's not a dirty well yeah. at all. Yeah. He's not, he's yeah. not a dirty well. Yeah. No. He would yeah. never do it because, yeah. because he's a dirty well. That's yeah. never what happens. Yeah. Uh, well, reasons aside, uh, I looked at it and I'm like, you know, that, that thing's really well relic. Wouldn't it be cool if I could womp it? And I looked at all the dot GT data and the data was favorable for it, particularly once I kind of like, really honed in on like, all right, I've got an R8 Wampa that's pretty well modded. Um, and then I decided to take a, a Doubt Kronk because, you know, yours doesn't have Doubt on it. I'm like, well, maybe that's some advantage because if uh, the Separatists really get rolling, they'll uh, they'll have to stop with their turn meter gain at least uh, once Wampa's under 100% health. And so I brought Wampa in. Um, he, uh, you know, he wasn't able to get his AOE off, so did not get the protection up. Came close to it, but ultimately, you know, I mean, the thing was decided within like 15 seconds. Ultimately, oh, was I, by I thought they just uh, overwhelmed you. I didn't know you didn't even get the first turn off. No, I did not. Uh, it was it was very close, like to me being able to get. Uh, I think if I had gotten the AOE off and got protection up, um, I think I would have been okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, maybe it would have been close because there's still, like, repost on there, so you're going to still attack under protection. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but, like, Wampa was... It, it didn't have the fighting chance I'd hoped. So that was one learning, and then I brought Sidious in, and that was a, a, a clean 59 because there was no Watt uh, to complicate things. Right. Then the two things that uh, were, like... I, I counters I felt better about than just uh, failed. One was against your JTR Holdo uh, Resistance Hero Fin, and if I recall, it had a. Uh, a I mean, obviously, I had the right uh, level six and nine. Um, you know, that everybody each character has to be below one hundred percent to kill anybody, and then Holdo level nine, and you have an R nine Holdo, really good squad, super fast uh, Hero Fin. 
Um, but uh, I felt like if I brought Jedi Knight Luke, Jedi Knight Cal, and JKR. Now, I think part of the mistake was I probably should have done a JKR lead, but I did a Jedi Knight Luke lead. Um, and uh, I wanted to be able to sort of circle back to a second Luke turn quickly, figuring, all right, I'll be able to take out, uh, like, um, I figured I had a couple things going for me. One, you do get repost on, um, on Jedi Knight Cal, so you have the ability to have him called by either Revan in focus or Luke uh, with his uh, his first special mm-hmm. can call Cal out of turn and get under protection. I'm like, all right, so I shouldn't get stuck. Your data crunch, I think it had a bunch of offense on it, if I recall. Yes. Uh, it, it hits so, so hard, Tess. It was really a great data crunch for it. That was all the difference was um, right out of the gate. Like once, uh, so I, I, while I was able to stun Finn, once he came out of stun, uh, they went all in on Revan, took Revan out, which was the proper sequence. Oh, of, you know, yeah. They are. And then uh, I was limping along with the other two Jedi, thinking uh, mate, there's a decent amount of survivability for JKL and Jedi Cal, but enough offense that it was able to eventually bust through Jedi Knight Luke. Uh, all before Cal even got his uh, his thirty stacks to ensure a kill, so that was a drop. And then I followed up with a, um, a Night Sisters, which, much like your description against me, Tass, it was a little a little sketch at moments. I mean, I think it's just sort of native to like the Night Sister experience, but like they pulled it off, and I actually got a thirty seven, so it would have been clean. But that uh, really, really nice job by our Kron there. And then uh, the last one was. Uh, Again, this is like tasks, like uh, ROI or like validation on, uh, on, on your projects here, my friend, in that Afra. So you have, TAS has an Afra that it's, a, it's R9, um, BT1, R9, Afra, and I think it's at R8, triple zero. Re- um, now, now and, as of two days ago, now <laughs> R9, triple zero. They earned it. They earned it. Uh, is it, you had uh, you've got the Amis on it for threes. I knew this was like state of the art as an Afro squad, but I brought Dash on Chewy with a uh, set thirteen prot up cron, um, and I did that in part yeah for a little bit of extra survivability, but mm-hmm. it was primarily because it had like fifty percent crit damage, and I knew that that match basically came down to can I blitz down Afra. Um, the difference maker on it, because Afra, uh, long story short, Afra I, on the opening salvo and follow up attacks, I got Afra down probably about ten percent health before it all hell broke loose. Uh, and you know, at that point, your team just keeps going. My, did my you did you say you got stuff. her down to ten percent health, or only got it's her down ten percent? No, I got her down to about. Okay. Two ten percent health. I, okay. I worked through. So here's the difference maker, and I, I you know this for your datacron, but to share for the listeners, the datacron, which is stroke of genius, on on level three had um, defensive prot up, which is twenty percent health. And so again, if it wasn't for that, and if no other difference in stats, I would have chewed all the way through Afra. I would have won that battle. But that 20% was just enough extra survivability to totally turn the tide. And I think we can all understand how the after squads work once they get rolling. And then at that point, you know, I've got all three of my characters with down on them. Um, I was funny. pretty screwed. Uh, that is so and funny. Actually, it wasn't that, that is- it was CLS Han Chewy. But so like, oh, it was, it was the total. I think it's working. It's working. It did not work. <laughs> uh, so, I, so got him, I got him. I don't okay. got him. I, I want to say yeah. one thing. That is exactly like a hundred percent to the T what Tass wanted. So I have to laugh at I this love because, it. I, because yes. there was a conversation about this, right? About like the whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then he's like, no, no, just understand what the bulk is going to do. And what if you don't get through that? So I just, I have to laugh at that, that you totally. guys are such a piece of a pod that exactly <laughs> what he said is exactly what Tass said. So it's cool. Oh, That's cool to yep. see, man. It was, it's, it's true. Shit. It's true. I was hoping for Total exactly shit. this outcome, something yeah. where you so were going to cool. try to burst through. So yeah. Tass, yeah. Did, did, so do you have a, a protection tr- uh, arrow on her too then? Because I moved mine over to a protection arrow. Um, I want to say it's still speed. So, yeah. 
Okay, because I have like a 26 speed uh, arrow. So I put I have a prot arrow, triangle, and circle on her. On I mean, that's not a terrible idea. It's probably something worth cultivating. But um, yeah, that's cool. I just, I just had to call that out real quick. That was, sure. yeah, it, but it would but it would part. weaken you for any kind yeah. of mirror, even though the mirror is a pretty rare matchup. She this is also nine percent protection on her arrow as it is, so it's not so bad. But yeah, I take your point. Yeah. Because um, that, that's, that, that's what we need to do, Jabba. Yeah, because that's what we need to do, Jabba, with her is that she just doesn't die. Like she got hard focused from Jabba with that prod up, and she just didn't die. Like, mm, she, mm hmm. Ooh, man. There's a couple of these that are actually worth looking at. I'll, I'll probably have to do that. That's not it. Wow, this one's actually <laughs> really good. This one's actually really yeah. good. That one's kind of crazy. That's why these conversations are great. I learn crap from you guys That's all the time, kinda... just like this. It's like, I'm going to go see if I have Ooh, something. I it's going to take a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll see what I can do. That's an interesting idea, hey, though. Man, I'll hey, look man, I have, I have, I have straight up spent a week on the mod just because, like, I think it was TJ suggested doing something. Uh, I forget I forget the character now, but he suggested doing something. It took me like a week to develop one mod for it, mm -hmm. and it worked. It paid that off. That sounds about right, though. Yeah, here and learning all yeah. things like that. It's usually that it's usually that intricacy, right? And then it's like, can you improve it to make it even harder or better? So that tracks. Yep. Um, yeah. Sorry, we hijacked that from the, you there, Sasha. Did you In have anything home. else you wanted to point out? No, no, that was it. That covered okay. it. I, I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Over to you, Tess. Uh, all right, all right. So for me, um, against. Uh, yeah, this is a great lesson against Sasha. Uh, so Kellering Gas Mace. Um, now, if you're going to do Malgar ISC to Kellerin plus Gas plus something, uh, first of all, make sure it's not Ahsoka, because Ahsoka can just dispel on an assist off of her basic and then end your ISC right there. So don't even attempt that if it's in a, an Ahsoka there. But if it's like Keller and Gas Mason, you're of the mind to do Malgar ISC. I haven't gotten far enough to tell you what is the best path to victory, but I will tell you that the only path to victory is your Maul going ahead of their gas plus 30 speed from the Keller and leadership. My source for this claim is taking Malgar ISC here against Sasha and then his, his gas reach back, push forth his mighty hand... And my 80,000 health, 141,000 prot maul was no more. Just removed from the field of play. Gonzo. So I actually went ham on my maul after this. Uh, moved some stuff around. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it on screen, but basically he's. I, I shifted a few stats around. He went from like 80k... Uh, health to like 76k, went from 141k prot to 146k prot, from 305 speed to 331 speed, yes, that's still all prot primaries, and still just a smidge over 10k offense. So, like, I I, uh, I will not be denied for this reason next time. Not not that, um, no, yeah, I will be seeing this next season. This Kelleran's going to be here next season, so I'm, I'm coming prepared. Similarly, I'm also working on raising the speed of my gas to increase that difficulty threshold for my, my opponents next time. So that was the one uh, attack drop on Sasha. The rest of it, you know, I, I already covered the couple of lucky fights that broke my way. Um, in the match here against uh, Bebe, GG Stat Magna. I saw encouraging win rate for Mother Talzin, Marin, and Daka. And um, I saw no. that it, it was like where it lost, it lost because somebody didn't take in like a Doutcron. They took in like a max health damage on three, set 13. So it's like, okay, I'm not a dodo. I'll just go ahead and grab a Doubt. And oh, what's the way to slice us? Let's take some crit avoidance too. Let's be prudent and make sure that we can take a couple hits before we get this train moving. And then I hit the button to start the battle, and then they took all the turns, and then it just said defeated on the screen. So that that was basically yeah. the technique. Uh, I tried that last week, and that's exactly what happened to me. I think I even told you that. Just yeah, it was like twenty two seconds or twenty five seconds, something like that. And it's like, uh, oh, I didn't get to play. And I was willing, <laughs> and I remembered you saying it, but I was willing to risk it. And there's definitely history of things that do work for me that don't work for you, and vice versa. So I would have taken the gamble, even if I hadn't known. Um, 
But I learned for myself that, hey, yes, also for me too, nah, that don't work. I think it's the Omi. I honestly think it might be the Omi. The the stap only the thing is though the stap yeah. only only triggers after what uh, your guys on you know you you are the enemy team your guys have to take their first turn for him to get the bonus no. turns they actually have to no. participate for that to actually do no. stuff the crazy shit with them doing everything before anyone got a turn is the datacron so that that that. Lesson well learned. Malgus DR Malik again took it out for 53. So, like I say, um, I wonder if it isn't better to have Sith no, Marauder no, in Tash, there instead Tash, of the DR. Omi, the o no, Tash, the Omi literally says he gets one at the start of battle. Oh, he does? Okay. And an additional bonus. For and an additional. Okay. Turn. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, like, he goes, puts the target lock down, their team gains turn meter, and then you just never get a turn because that's the train. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, the, the, you know, him using his middle, it's not like it's putting down target lock or anything. It's just everything's still crazy yeah. right after that. Yeah, but it removes your turn meter. Yes, it does. It wasn't. And it it's feeds not more great. turn meter than your team, and, that, and that's what's like. So I think it might work in threes if you don't have the Omi. But how many people at this point have staff and probably don't have the Omi because we're all winners? Well, particularly the people that you get, if you're fighting out in this neck of the woods and they've got staff involved on defense, it's going to have an Omicron. So. I, I like how Tash is like, this neck of the woods, it's like, I'm just in Tash, like, yeah, I'm just inside the top 50. Top 50, top 100, I'm pretty sure it won't be too much different. In terms no, of I know, staff, I'm just giving you a hard time about you saying way up here. Hey, look, I'm, uh, look like, I'm at where I'm at, and right now I'm on an upswing, and I've been on downswings, and look, I'm at, I'm at where I'm at. What do you want me to say? You missed the, yeah, your butt was supposed to be, and they're all eroding the counts. Well, yeah, that's right. That's my future, you know. Uh, one, one, day, one day I want to achieve what Kabuki has achieved and just have whole seasons of me and seven Erodiums and just just put them through the meat grinder. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the way to be. Okay, uh, that really was my only other drop on attack. Um, yeah, no, I don't think we had any fleet drops the entire season. So that's... That's nice. All right, guys, standout defenses. Segment three here. So who held the line for you? Dagger? Uh, yeah. Um, partially due to where I am I'm currently in gag. But then we're all drops on my defense. Oh, my God. Uh, Finn Finn's already got holds. Um, uh, back, of course, back gas snips. Like, that, that team is and GG Stap uh, B2. Both of those are pretty oppressive when you're, like, down around 200. Mm -hmm. People don't have good answers to those because, like, their Treyas are still our seven. Mm -hmm. And Gas just, like, makes things disappear. Don't don't let um, Dagger lie to you. He's playing in Geo land right now. When he can say the word Geos and hold, that's when you know. I that's where Dagger's at. No, 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 no. I didn't say hold. <laughs> I said I fought in Geo's team with a level nine on defense. I know. I, it's I just the transition of the, the definition, right? It's like it was CG land, it's dagger land, it's like Geo land. When you can say you see <laughs> steps on, and it's not, it's not staff or this new thing. It's like, no, 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 we're talking Geo's, guys. Geo's were on defense. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but it, but it was with in? the spy cron. It was with the cron. Yeah, it's like, what world are you in? Yeah. Hey, level nine. It's not like they just put their gear twelve geos down, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, 20, no. That's 20. fair, dagger. Completely fair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I will just make this note on holds. Like my fleet held really strong all week, all month, really. And it's because I don't know who put this into people's heads, but why does it? Feel, maybe this is just where I'm at. But it's like, is everyone just putting triple meta down because that makes it so hard for you to clear? <laughs> There's a lot of folks that do that, but I, I really, I think I encountered, so it, Bebe in this last round did exactly that, but I want to say maybe only other one other time this whole season did somebody do that, and I and I agree. Yeah. I think um, it's impossible to exchange favorably on banners, because um, all I do, like, if you're, if you're going to be real tricky, I'm just holding Profundity and Leviathan, and then I'm using Chimera as my third oh. offensive fleet, and I'm, you know. I get to pick, you know, I it's, I, I, at worst, I 73 average everything, and then depending on what you put down, I'm 77-ing something, 76-ing another thing. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, like this. Yeah, this is like the sixty-eight banner floor for Empire at this point, and then it's just like Prof ITB, and then like Nego versus like Triple Attacker. Mm -hmm. I, I was averaging like like you said, like seventy-two, seventy-three with a couple of seventy-five, seventy-sixes. It's like I, I, I think eight of my nine opponents set triple. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, 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 and like it might be a product of where I just was this month, but man, it, it, it felt good to get the fleets. Like I get a hold or two for free. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just funny that you should mention that. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess I would have covered this eventually, but yeah, it's uh, uh, malevolence held against Bebe. So exactly that scenario, right? He said, uh, so man. yeah, it, yeah, he set triple, and then and then it it cost him. Nego it was happens. and then Nego was his only triple attacker counter on the flip side, and then he had to try to. Oh, hold him but but you point. but this wasn't Baby's first day. I know his predilection for negotiator against that. So obviously it was Hound's tooth up front. So no, no, you won't be doing that. <laughs> no, Nego still works. No, Nego still works. Well, he didn't try it's it like, there. I'll tell you it that. Just, it just oh, okay. that's the only thing. It just sucks for the fight. It's I'm, harder, I'm, but it's still it's you'll lose you'll lose your tank, but it's still a pretty good fight. Mm -hmm. But did, but I will say this: whenever I see like and man, this is gonna sound like shade. I don't mean it to be particularly. No. Um, but I will say that it's nice when there, there's a couple of guilds that are all in the same family. That if you fight them, you know that you're gonna win on fleet no matter what you set. And that just feels good sometimes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Any other key defenses, Dagger? Yeah, Slim Shady. The not shady guy. Uh, a little bit of shady. Not no, slim either. But yeah. I, I didn't have steer, yeah. I didn't oh, have steer on defense this week, but that is like the eternal hold getter for me. Who? Who? Sorry, Quagga. I, I didn't have steer on defense this week, but like, oh. man, it it sucks not having that because it, it it I looked back. He got a hold every round last three v three season. Wow. And they got a hold like seven of the nine last five v five. Yeah, it's and it just feels it's bad a great to team. not send it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. That is that is one of my favorite teams in the abstract. I don't having much fun using it but man it's just one of those teams where i'm just like yeah this team's stupid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah all right. all right well tj no, how right. about you who held the line uh, it's small windows man because there's efficiency game this week but um the big one that the zori is doing it's and it's gonna be all resistance so it's funny uh rounds one and two the Finn, the Zori, and the Rose were really good holds, like mm -hmm. back out holds that to go back in with something. So that was a really good one with the right cron. Um, round three was, again, resistance, but it was the team we talked about, Tash, JTR with the uh, Holdo, and it was Finn. So Hero Finn with the super fast Hero Finn with the right setup and the Holdo cron. Complete hold. Like had to back out all the way and start over. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was just a good one. So... Um, and then the final thing that held round two, and we're talking four hold, didn't clear, and I showed it. There was Chef Kiss Good, Executor. So my Executor team, just standard. We're not talking about the crazy. It was like I swapped one thing up, and maybe he used it wrong, maybe he didn't. Four holds, and still holding. So it's holding to today for round two. Um, on a on a thing where I placed a, what did I send, a 2075 or 2076 on the guy. Um, he dropped one on the ground, which was, again, the Finzori. And then executor, and never, never came back for it. The muhaha moment. That's right. Really... That's right. He'll he'll never financially recover from this. No, 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 no. He's just sitting sad, still in the corner somewhere. Executor <laughs> beat him. All so, right. Yep, that was it. Nice and small. Okay. All right. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't. All right, Sasha. But you should. But you should. It's okay. Sasha. Are you what is this? Twenty twenty one. Getting stonewalled by an executor. I mean, I, 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 mean, I would rather lose to an executor than to something like an endurance. <laughs> and I've done that. Yeah, Not this season, but I've done that. It's a whole different order of shame. You, you, you're, only, you're only thinking of just one shame. You're not thinking of the whole order of shame and where this one shame fits within the spectrum. All right. I'm just thinking about did, you, did, did somebody fail with Nego versus uh, Executor, and it's like, oh man, you gotta feel so bad at that point. Ah, uh, yeah, that is, I would imagine that's so. It's an emotional lot. Yeah. Yes. Now, Sasha. Uh, so, yes, so you. For my, yeah. So for my defenses, you know, you, you talk about the the battle you had against Keller and Beck, 
gas mace. Uh, you know, the Keller and Beck squads, I just, got, I, I feel like, got to be taken pretty darn seriously. Mm-hmm. People were um, starting to to figure them out by the end of the season, but um, they can hit really darn hard, and I, I don't regret setting gas with Keller and Beck at all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that that was that was a meaningful one, and then had another uh, hold in the week with uh, like TJ was saying the resistance comps. Uh, I went with um, a mix that I think you did this as well, Pass, but uh, I I liked um, having the Finn Zori Rose, mm-hmm. uh, and then separate from that having JTR Resistance Hero Finn and Holdo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I definitely was uh, uh, inspired, so to speak, by your data crime no test. That offense that you had on the Holdo JTR resistance hero fan one was awesome. Th- that's my and Raycron in fives, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, I totally get it. I mean, that, and, and it worked so well in threes. So that's one that I'm, uh, like, we have Conquest that's just reopened. And, like, one of the few data crimes I'm still going to kind of search out is a higher offense resistance one. So that one, uh, that one left a mark. Those, those would be my, uh, my two that are worth sharing. How about you, Tess? And it, well, really quick, an additional thought on the, uh, well, one thing I have noticed, like, and again, I'll just speak to, this is my observations where I'm, where I was at and I'm not quite up where you guys are. Um, but seeing gas going with Beck, I feel like that alone kind of pulled Tuskins off defense this month because people needed a clean answer to Rex Rex fives. Yeah. So not having to kill very many Tuscan teams was also not uh, refreshing. I'll say because it's been such a staple on defense where you just have yeah. to come correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now that you mention it, uh, I want to say it was against Sasha. He had Rex Rex fives, and I had Tuscans on defense that round. Um. I had a set 13 prod up with, I want to say, as much crit damage as I can muster, but I don't think it ultimately was a lot. Uh, but Hunter, Bad Batch, Echo, and Tech, we were able to endure, um, you know, the opener, and then we kind of just carefully kept it on lock, and it went down for 57. Um, and I, and you know Sasha's going to have him well set up, so, I mean, it was it was a pretty solid control fight once you survived the opener and i want to say it was only one character that had that first instance of product triggered so it wasn't even all that crazy uh but we were well protected for it so but rex cracks well you have an r9 record right huh sorry it was well i no actually i think i think he's eight but it was hunter bad batch echo and tech that i took Oh, oh okay but yeah you also yeah that's the other thing too. Like you can much have an R eight floor at this point. So yes, oh that's that's almost for sure. That's kind of like one of my low key goals. It's 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 almost something I have like ninety nine percent done for defense. But I want to have basically every character I see myself reasonably using in GAC to be relegator better. That's like a stretch goal. But at fourteen point two million, fourteen point two seven seven, whatever. Like what other kind of oh, goals geez. you gonna have? Right. But but stretch goals, you know. Also, also, well, since you brought that up, I have also noticed that the further we go into this game, the faster like you catch up to the people ahead of you because they have nothing, they have less to work on. Well, sure. And when you say that, I, I just when you said that, it just right, just clicked in my head. I'm like eight k GP short of fourteen mil now, and I've been like five to seven hundred k behind you for in years. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, you know, I mean, to, this raid, man, this raid has really brought us all up. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, that much is very sure. Um, so I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, we 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 were talking there about uh, Tuskins. No. You fighting Tuskins with your uh, bad back? Sorry, got derailed. Oh yeah, no, but well before that, I think we were talking about uh, defenses still. So yeah, I mean in in yeah. in the round with Sasha, Sasha already covered how those went. So yeah. The RJT, Resistance Hero, Finn, and Holdo. This is a really effective split this this last season, and I expect I'll be using it as long as this crown's around for the next threes. Um, being able to have, like, 
Ray, Swolo, and then a third of basically your choice. I went with Sorty. Sorty's traditionally been a, a decent choice to go with her. The value is in having three teams, not the very best Ray team, right? So then you get your Finn, Zori, Rose, as Sasha said, and then your uh, RJT, Resistance Hero, Finn, and Holdo. And you know, some people call that that RJT team like a cheese, and it's like it's not cheese. I mean, you don't you me having a very strong set of stats on that Datacron helps it be dangerous for sure. And I'm and and you heard Sasha say like the the offense on it mattered, so it's not that it doesn't, but it's powerful enough just with the three six nine. What what's going on there? That well, it cheese in the sense that it gets wampled basically for free. Yeah, me. Yeah, I mean me. Hmm. It, it could it's be. It's not cheese in the sense that it's not like a reasonable team. It's like I, I wanted two of those teams this month. Like yeah. JTR BB8, Holdo, and then JTR Risk Zero Finn, Holdo. Mm. They I mean, weren't that really is cool. close to being like, close. See, and I and and with the so kind of might, stats involved on some of the crons I was fighting, I, I don't know if it occurred to you, Sasha, to maybe take a swing at it that way. But I know you said against me, you you decided to apply your Wampa differently. But I, it would not have occurred to me to try that. Uh, out of respect for the kind of stats I'm seeing. Yeah, I don't know that the that Wampa would bust through the protection up of an R9 Holdo. Um, so I, I'd be really well, eventually. I'm sure. I like the idea. Ended, it just ended up being a one on one at the end versus Holdo. But uh, yeah, I fought against one that was 44 percent offense. You can't kill them until they're all under 100 percent health, level six. Um, and then the tenacity yeah. up, potency up three. Yeah, and it just wasn't close. It took like three minutes, but they never got my. Okay. They never really got. They they got through my prod initially. I slammed, and then I they never got through that prod. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, yeah, my second hold there that round was like uh, like we'd already covered Trench Django Dooku, and then Afra BT One Triple Zero. We've already covered the goods on those, so I won't beat that horse anymore. Uh, the last round there with Kellerin. Um, yeah, sorry, against Bebe. Keller and Gas Mace got three holds, so I can't wait to see what happened on GG there, but there were several things that he thought it was, and then it was not. Um, that was his only drop. That, te that team was his only drop on the whole board, so it was. Yeah, I was going to get all the good I was going to get out of it right there. And and then, I, like I said, the one fleet hold, um, Malevolence is pretty rare to get any kind of hold in fleets these days, but I was I was grateful for it. And as always, with with fleets on defense, if you're not setting like the top meta fleets um, and you're setting anything like uh, like I was, you'll have malevolence or you'll have like a negotiator down, something like that. Really have to be careful about the reinforcements you set down because like if malevolence, if you're setting it with only vulture and you put soldier there, soldier's coming out first. You need vulture to come out first. Don't put anything in there with your vulture aside from vulture just just have vulture and then if you're doing negotiator like all with I, I can really think of just about no exception to this why if you're going to set negotiator on defense the only two reinforcements should be plo and ahsoka that's it don't bring fives because fives can come in ahead don't bring consular because consular can come at, uh, come in ahead just go with ones that are going to preserve the turn order that you want and, and then the best chance of stripping banners with a lesser fleet, you, you know, you're, you're doing the best you can for yourself there. Ah, okay, guys, uh, lessons learned here. Wrap it up the season. So, you know, we'll, we'll dust this stuff off when we're coming back around here for the next three versus three. But any key points you guys picked up here in the last week that, uh, you know, that you're going to brush up on, like, you know, Sasha said that, uh, a couple Datacrons he fought ha has him, you know, with a couple goals for Conquest this week. But uh, how about it, guys? Uh, Dagger, how about you first? Any any lessons learned out of threes here, out of this last week? Yeah, I think going forward it's just going to, like, I actually had fun this last week just doing whatever I wanted. Not really scouting, just throwing stuff against the wall, mm -hmm. not taking it too seriously. And it'll hurt me in fives, but I think that's my that's my thing is, like, I've been searching for a way to make threes like not kind of poopy for me. Mm -hmm. I understand some people like what people don't, but like for me, I've just Dash has been apprised of like the ongoing struggle I've had to enjoy threes. And I think I finally found like something that kind of sort of works. And it's just use the teams I like using, 
you know, kind of pull the fatal, you know. Put put what I don't want to use on defense, say what I want to use for offense, and just see what happens. I lose, I lose. All right, well, fair enough. That, 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 that's, I think, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like, that's, um, I mean, I think that's a worthy point. Your position's certainly not unique in the community, right? Like, there's a lot of people who don't care for threes, and I, I have long have been saying, and I'm glad that you're finding your own way to, to do it, that, you know, you might as well find your way to embrace it because the crystals are all the same and it's the only GAC in town for a month at a time every other month. So what you going to do? So, you know, I'm glad that, you, that you're that you finding a way and, uh, you know, hopefully you have more fun with it next season and you'll have uh, some interesting finds just from taking that risk. Anything else you wanted to say there, though? Lessons learned wise? All right, all right. TJ, how about you? What from week three? No, um, I think it obviously plays into five and where we're going to go, but I think a lot of the data we'll have here will play invaluable to what we're going to see the next season. Obviously, doubt is gone, and we know how good this data cron set is. So if I'm taking away anything, is I think a lot of this is going to hold over. We're back to, uh, in my opinion, super strong teams, right? We're going to be back to doubts gone, so we're going to have some uh, powerhouses just beating the hell out of each other. Uh, I think is what we're going to start seeing. Um, that's probably my biggest takeaway, and I think you're right in resistance. That that three with the six combo is a really bold combo. So I think for what you said, I think that has a lot of merit of being able to put a team that you just don't get to disrespect, right? It actually takes something that you have to put. Mm-hmm. And that's what we really need is those really key teams. So I think those are the big takeaways. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Sasha, how about you? Yeah. I, uh, the big sort of like learnings and takeaways, I, I, I don't – most of what I, I learned I, I feel like is kind of like really tactical to threes, not going to be as applicable to fives. But they're um, – No, that's okay. That's the spirit of the question. Not. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, but he, he, here's actually sort of a, a bigger takeaway, and uh, I just, in in watching um, your match against me, sort of like getting the perspective of having somebody else attack your defense, yeah. and uh, what I I kind of call out as like just like an actionable like sight from the way you were you you approached it that I think is so good that's worth sharing with listeners is like. When I was watching you go against my defense, I deliberately set out a defense that um, I thought was um, going to draw, you know, more GLs or strong counters than you would have in the bank, right? And what I thought was done really well, and that I encourage people to like learn from and, and try and do, is to find one or maybe two. And I think you had you actually had two or maybe three of these, but um, find the matchups where you can just uh, a little bit surprisingly go a bit cheap and completely change what you have in the bank. And like, uh, I, I'll call out, for example, the Treya counter that you used on the front wall, um, the JKR Treya counter. Um, Treya, I, even even I, I feel way more comfortable if I'm taking a GL against it or something like really big and heavy for you to be able to use JKR there um, is huge and literally match changing. Uh, you know, you had talked previously about similarly, I think it was with uh, maybe JTR Holdo, you were going to use LB if you didn't get Night Sisters to work. And that's another example of it. Mm-hmm. But um, finding those counters, and that's where like a JKR versus Treya, and what I kind of encourage people to do, and fives, again, it's a different hunting ground than threes, but to go out and find those squads that like you kind of expect to see that routinely draw GLs and find an alternative that's not a GL, and the entire match not fully flips, but it tilts significantly based on it. So that's like the, the, the cool kind of like learning or observation out of this past week is the, the huge value in hunting out those um, like one. And it doesn't, you know, it's foolish to find 11 or 15 of them. It's about finding one and then every other counter shifts from being close or like maybe a little sketchy to more comfortable because suddenly you're kind of like, ratcheting every everything you have up one rung relative to what uh, is on defense and that's especially true even if it's not like particularly great banners 
Um, so if you can find a thing that like in threes, I guess it's like, even if it's 52 to 54 banners and you can take out a GL, maybe it's even like 50, right? Maybe you lose a guy and like you lose all your protection. But yeah, to, uh, just to expound a little bit on your point, I don't know if you agree with it or not, but it's like, even if you can find something that's not super efficient, it's still just like really opens up the board because the number of times that like, man, Bane, Bane versus Leia is like my ear quotes go-to thing like that. Um, because if you said it, I just don't really have an answer. Mm. Um, and then that's that's a less extreme example because I don't want to tip my hat or anyone else's hat for what they've used. But that that's just like the, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's nice to if you can find anything that beats something for cheap. I totally agree, Dagger, and it's one of those reasons. I know we've talked about this before, but like for me, that that's how I tend to approach this stuff, and also why like willing to sacrifice a little bit of banner efficiency. Why. It's not uncommon if you compare just bottom front wall to bottom front wall. I tend to be behind uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a decent amount on banner count there, um, but win the vast majority of my matches because, like, I'll make those trade offs and I'm way better equipped for the back road because of that willingness, like you're talking about, Dagger, that, like, yeah, trade a couple of banners off, but have, like, you know, an extra GL, you know? Yeah, like, like, uh, using Newt Django B1 versus Qui-Gon, I mean, you're still losing, you know, Newt most of the time, so it's like a 52, 53. Right. But mm -hmm. you don't have to expend, like, JKR. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned that, um, Sasha, uh, and, I, and I guess you here expanding on it, uh, there, but the, uh, the, the shift was a big deal here in, in the in the very next round against Bebe uh, because I using DTMG I thought about it a minute whether or not I wanted to use DTMG later on the board for something unforeseen or just use JMK cat GK against his Jabba that was up front and I opted to use DTMG and it worked just fine and he had not set JMK on defense the entire season but it was sitting waiting in the back for me <laughs> and i had jmk to answer but for the grace of god so yeah just just that just that thought to to make the shift and take what also che you know checked out to be a solid counter really saved my bacon because i i remember on stream specifically saying it's like which one do I think is going to do more for me in the back wall? And surely it's got to be JMK, so let's take this DTMG and see how it goes. And it was 57, and sure enough, we recovered. So, yes, very good. Uh, anything else you wanted to say, though, Sasha? Lessons No, that us. covers it. Nope. Very good, very nope. good. Yeah, um, for, for my own part, I, I've really embraced the last couple of seasons of this shift towards the efficiency, not in the sense that I like it more, prefer it, but I understand it better. And I have, and I have, um, I have a, a better like sense, uh, a better intuition about what I can do and get away with and for what kind of banners. So I'm grateful for the practice, uh, over the last couple of seasons, the, the looking up counters and setting the careful filters on insight. Um, I'm I'm setting it so that the defensive relics are never under seven. Um, you know, if I'm fighting somebody and it's a really novel counter, like if it's like Aesop and it's one of his really weird ones that he sets, and everybody on it's like relic eight, maybe I'll raise that filter to be defense minimum relic level is eight. But otherwise, seven is good enough. Um, you know, set your no cleanups filter, your division one filter, set up the datacron right, check off the omicrons that apply, get your get your real filter data looking at these things, because that's how you find it. You'll see me do it all the time on stream. I invent only out of necessity, and the rest of the time is, if I feel like I've got my back against the wall, I'm looking up options, and then if I see something, I'm thinking about, just as Sasha was saying, how I can move things around on the board. How do I move things from pretty good to closer to certain certain lockdown counter, right? Um, and, and being able to look that up on Insight is key. Uh, as far as coming here for the next threes, it's, it's, uh, we're going to have a lot of the set 14 successes will be on defense. 
um, surely as a starting point for the first week of three. So expect a lot of the set 14 greatest hits to be uh, standard fare at the start of the next three season. We'll have some visibility by by that time about what set 15 is going to look like. And, and y'all know, you know, we're going to have a Datacron video on that. And plotting and scheming preview for Fivers 5, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cover, or for, for that next 3v3, we'll cover that. Um, but, you know, all in good time. But that's it for, for my lessons. I mean, just, just being being willing to, to look things up uh, when the margins are so tight has made all the difference for those little audibles. So kind of kind of stole my thunder a little bit there, Sasha, but you, you helped the point more than you <laughs> stole it from me. So it's all good, man. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Uh, we're, we've made it here to the end of threes. Um, final thoughts. What's your parting word for the people here? Because we were we won't see them for the rest of the week, and then we've got the preview video for the next five versus five. So until then, Dagger, what's your parting thought for the folks at home? Man, we have no threes is over. We have no TV this week. <sighs> oh, it's gonna be a good week. Bliss. Oh, oh, and it couldn't happen at a better time for me personally because I got a ton of crap going on this week. Um, Fantastic. I know we were trying to schedule the in between one, and I'm just like I'm just pulling my Taylor Swift. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me, right? Mm -hmm. When you're just trying to like <laughs> hammer out a time. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be nice, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Enjoy the leisure for sure. TJ, how about you? Your final thought for the people. Uh, things we talked about, and I'm, I, I would really suggest tweaking those data crowds, getting. I was, what is it? Uh, those ones you're going to need for defense and offense. Everybody should have a whole bunch basically running around, and we're into this week. So, what's the number everybody really, says? Like thirty? Uh, you need that for threes, I believe, because you're actually looking at a fifteen, fifteen. But uh, now we're broke down, right? We have what is well, it? Eleven I, I thought, strong what teams. What is it? Is it? It's like twenty something or thirty something that everybody yeah, says to go or for. Like it'll be good. But, but all I wanted to say is between the well, two. Yeah. Really get those optimized. That's the only. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think we're in an awesome situation, but that just gives more time into conquest to to really just mm -hmm. refine sure. those beauties and make them the ones that are really going to do the damage. That's, that's really right. Be that is a fair point for the folks. Uh, put love into this conquest. I mean, you know, you're already working on it anyway, of course. But yeah. this is the second and final run of set yeah. fourteen in conquest. There's always three runs of conquest per. Conquest character, but only two runs of a given Datacron set, so get them while they're hot. That's a fair point. Anything else there, TJ? Sorry? Yeah. No, and, I well, think you and, got and, it. And, and to expand on TJ's point a little bit when it comes to the number of Datacrons, uh, I know I'm in the I'm in the, the group where I optimize like maybe two to four crons per set, because like three rolls get prohibitively expensive after a while. Um, but this is one of those where like going into fives, I know I personally try to have uh, you know, obviously you have like the, the 12 to 15 teams where you have the cron for them, right? And then I want to make sure that I have five to seven like raw stack crons that are semi-focused. So it ends up being around 30 crons for 5v5. Whereas in 3v3, the first couple weeks, it's just, I need volume. But yeah, make make don't neglect your stack crons. There's a lot of stats in this set. Uh, this, this whole set, just... Like I said, I, I, I cannot stress it enough. This whole set is an amazing set. So yeah, just yeah, take yeah. care of that. Just I, I cannot stress this enough. This this is one of those ones where everybody who doesn't want to is still doing it. All the people who didn't really do rerolls are doing rerolls. This is the set that has all of this I'm stuff like that everybody wants. It's it's just yeah, nuts. Like 250, and that's me. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. that's, why, that's why I say this. As far as like, what, what can you do right now? If you don't have TB and that stuff, just focus on your conquest to get your... Your re rolls up and just re roll the hell out of them until you feel like you're happy with and, it. Or and you know, Aesop and I covered this in the set 14 Datacron video, but this is a great, uh, because it's the last run of this this conquest for you folks at home. Um, get uh, Have a couple crons, maybe one or two 
for light side and dark side, so maybe up to four of these crons that are the accuracy up level three and just happen to have a mess of accuracy on it, you're re-rolling it away from every other crumb. But if you happen to get one where you just get a mess of, of accuracy on it, re-roll the three to also get accuracy and back pocket that. You, like, you know, don't put a ton into it, but having a couple of those, you we have no idea what this next set's going to look like. So it, you don't know whether or not you're going to need that accuracy, but if you do, you better cultivate it oh. here this you know this next couple of weeks. And we, and we'll obviously you'll obviously talk about it with Aesop on the next set, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about it on the next in between, not this from the next one. But it's like, man, I I know we have uh, conquest in sets of three and data crowns in sets of twos, and I think I speak for everyone uh, when I or at least all of us when I say it is such a godsend when the first Datacron set is the third Conquest unit set. Because you already know what you're doing, you already have your plan optimized, and you can just min-max those Crons off the rip. It, and that's gonna happen with this last Padme, uh, last Am Queen Amidala, or Princess, whatever, the Amidala mm. Conquest. Her third Conquest is gonna be the first of a Datacron set. And I always really appreciate when that happens. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll make a big splash here, um, and that will be oh, fun. I'm, no, no. But no, my, 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 I'm referring to, I. it'll be the third of her set, so we already know how to do all the feats. Yeah. So you just buzz through it and get to your Datacron farm. That, that's kind of what I was saying. Like, I, I see. I, I got I'm gonna you. Really I got really you. enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to just be... Oh, that's fair. All right, well, well Sasha, you should... Head. Well, sorry, sorry to cut you off. There. No, 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 that's all. That's all. No, no. But Sasha, uh, how about you? Your parting words for the folks at home. Uh, I, so I, uh, to the point of this data crunch set and how strong it is, I think that there are some, uh, you know, as, we, as the table shrinks as we go from threes to fives and you consolidate a little, more, a little bit more, um, and people in really striving to get holds, put a bunch of GLs on D. I think some non-GL squads that can do surprising damage against GLs are fueled by these this data crunch set. Like what Keller and Beck squads can do, what uh, a Finn Holdo squad can do. I think that there are, uh, I think there are going to be some major ramifications in fives for like GL counters using um, these new Datacron sets. So it's kind of to that point of, yeah, uh, as everybody has said, lean in on them, get those things finely tuned, and then, uh, yeah, be re be ready to put them to, to high value use. It could be on D, but I actually think they can take out GLs as well. So that's the stuff that uh, I'll be excited to see more in some of the community's creativity with uh, in this five season. How about you, Tess? Yeah. Um... For my part, I, Lizzie's decided to join me here at the end. But, um, yeah, for, for my part, I would just say, uh, you know, get get ready here. It's the last hurrah for your doubt, Kranz. Um, enjoy your time with the week off. And, yeah, keep keep an eye out for the in-between video. We have an excellent guest lined up. It, surprise for you guys. You'll see it when it comes out. Trust me. But oh, it's yes, worth I'm your excited. time. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled here for in uh, next week's um 5v5 prep video and uh yeah you know we'll we'll, we'll be looking forward to it all right uh let me situate let me situate my daughter here real quick and we'll do the close up guys give me just a minute All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start the, the wrap-up. Well, um, let's see. Here on this video and on my channel and everything, if you want to be in touch with me, my Discord's a place to do it, so check that to get there. Of course, if you're already here seeing this on YouTube, be sure to hit subscribe, uh, get notifications about my, my content. Uh, like this video if you liked it. It, it does help. It helps get visibility. Um, and, you know, it's a... It's nice to actually see the interaction. Uh, I'll, I'll check the video on a daily basis. Oh, man, you guys like it. I appreciate that. 
Um, and of course, yeah, if you want to see my uh, my live streams, I'm on twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. I do take the VODs from that, upload them to YouTube with chapters added for easy browsing. As I mentioned, I make some other GAC-focused uh, content here. Um, we have the Datacron set videos uh, for sets 13 and 14 that are current. I'll be making a new one for 15 when it comes up. Uh, and then, of course, this here podcast, available on YouTube, Spotify, uh, YouTube Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and hopefully soon, uh, Apple Podcasts. They're, they're a pain uh, to get it done, but, you know, we'll, we'll get there. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, let's see. And if, of course, you like what we're doing here and you want to support the stream, support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. So check out patreon.com forward slash Tassinix. For any upwardly mobile GAC player, there's something there of interest to you. Whether it's at the $5 tier, gets you into the Tass house, gets you early access to all my uh, YouTube exclusive content. Um, and so, you know, my, my general release for these videos are coming out on Friday. My patrons get them on Monday or Tuesday morning, depending on when we end up recording them. But those few days of advance notice helps you get your prep done before you're locked in for the new week of GAC. Maybe that's worth it to you. You could also check out the $10 tier. Uh, that bundles you up with an OmegaBot Patreon membership. So you'll see at the start of my streams, I'll do my uh, my scouting report on my opponent and you know what I, what I expect to see coming. And almost no other tool, I don't think there is another tool, that gives you such a powerful sense of what your opponent is about, offensively or defensively, than OmegaBot. So... Really recommend that. And at the $15 tier is the Double Bot Bundle with Omega Bot Patreon and Hot Utils, which is just the premier, you know, loadout and mod management tool. Um, takes a process that could be hours and makes it minutes. So, really like it. We have to thank the patrons themselves that make all this possible. So, a VIP access thank you goes out to White Wolf, Sam Vimes, Jobin4527, Stark Strategy Gamer, Rene Bebe, Deadpool Cow28, Johnny B. Ottawa, JJ's Productions Twitch, Sweens14, Darth QPPMG, Ray's Malvis, and Brock Thud Steel. At VIP Access Plus, uh, with the Omega Bot Bundle, thank you to Stryker and Esh Sotnikam. At VIP Access Premium, with the Double Bots, it's Quig, Ibanek, Sir Boss, and Trevor Boy Gaming. And ne uh, last but never least, at Jester's Club Elite, Nomad's Reaper, my number one supporter. Uh, just shows up out of nowhere sometimes, drops hundreds of subs, thousands of biddies, uh, extraordinarily support and generosity over the years. Thank you so much, man. We also have to do our special thanks to Yoda Force, one of my earliest supporters, bought me the mic I'm speaking to you on right now. Uh, used to be my guild uh, guildmaster back when I was in Vanguard, but he's long since quit the game. We remember him fondly and uh, wish him well on the other side. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you so much for your work here in the background, especially during this recording, uh, managing our very active and curious daughter who sometimes wants food from Dad, but most of the time wants him to write letters or numbers or names. So appreciate you running interference. And of course, to Dagger, TJ, and Sasha Isha, my co-hosts here on Plotting and Scheming, thank you guys so much for making the time out of your very busy uh, work and family schedules to make our show. Um, it's, it's often a challenge for us to make this, uh, work for our schedules, but we're always getting it done. And I appreciate the effort you guys put forth, uh, not only carving out the time, but, you know, having your thoughts together and, and making our show. Thank you so much. All right, guys, uh, flipping back on over here to the main scene. I got to click the right buttons. Uh, yeah. So... Look, uh, look out here for the in-betweener video, but uh, it's it's been a fun season. Eight and one's one of my better, and uh, I'm 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 gonna see how many Erodium accounts I can fight in the first week of fives. But uh, until the five vs five preview video, it's been real. It's been awesome. It's been real awesome. Take care. <laughs>